is Chris Six News at 10. I don't know how I would feel if someone killed a, a, a loved one of mine, you know, and I imagine it would be really, really hard to, to truly forgive that person. And so I, I told him, I'm not going to ask them to forgive me. I'm just going to let them know I'm sorry. Those are the words of John Henry Ramirez in 2017, his apology to the family of his victim, Pablo Castro. Five years later, after that, he is still waiting to be executed, but now yet another twist in this case. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Katia Uriarte. My partner, Pat Simon, is on special assignment. The case of John Henry Ramirez has been making headlines since 2004. It was in July of that year when Ramirez killed Pablo Castro during a convenience store robbery. Ramirez was not taken into custody, though, until 2008 when he was captured along the Texas-Mexico border. He was sentenced to death in 2009, but a series of legal maneuvers have helped him to avoid execution to this day. Most recently, the Supreme Court took up his case. Ramirez was seeking to have his spiritual advisor pray aloud and touch him as he is executed, and the high court agreed. And earlier this week, a new execution date was set for October 5th of this year. But today, yet another turn in this case. Nueces County District Attorney Mark Gonzalez has filed a motion to withdraw the order to put Ramirez to death. Our Seth Kovar has been following the latest twists and turns on this story. Seth, I'm sure the family, all they want is justice, but you have reaction from both parties tonight. Yeah, you hear justice mm -hmm. and closure from mm -hmm. them. It's more frustration and heartbreak for Pablo Castro's family. October 5th was the fourth execution date for Ramirez in the past five years. The other three were either stayed or withdrawn, and it looks like this one will be too. And this one's all because of a new policy at the DA's office. I have a set of policies and principles, and at the end of the day, I have to follow them. And doing so means convicted capital murderers like John Henry Ramirez won't be put to death under Nueces County DA Mark Gonzalez's watch. I have for a while now um, said that uh, I don't believe in the death penalty. I'm, my office is not going to seek the death penalty anymore. The proof is in the motion Gonzalez filed today. He's trying to get Ramirez's execution date withdrawn, a date just set Tuesday after the DA's office asked for it. Turns out it was an assistant DA who requested the date, who didn't know the new policy. Once I found out that that had occurred, uh, I filed a motion to withdraw that date of an execution. Withdrawing or keeping the execution date is in the hands of the judge from Ramirez's trial. His attorney, Seth Kretzer, thinks the judge will toss it, and according to Gonzalez's motion, he won't seek any executions as long as he's in office. That would mean at least two more years of waiting to see their loved one's killer put to death for Pablo Castro's family, a family Kretzer says he has the greatest empathy for. If there was something I could say that could ameliorate their suffering, I would certainly say it. There probably is not, uh, but just know that my thoughts and prayers are with that family. For Gonzalez, it's at least partly about the history of the death penalty that he says skews against minorities. I don't feel that the government should have that power to put people to death because historically, those individuals that have been put to death have been of color, of low economic status, or even low intellect. I wasn't able to get a recorded interview with any of Castro's family members, but I did spend a good amount of time on the phone with his youngest son. Fernando Castro was 11 years old when his dad was brutally murdered. Now, 29, he still wants justice, and he's saddened and angered that October 5th might come and go with Ramirez still alive. Katia.